Since its release in 2018, speedrunners and glitch hunters have destroyed Celeste. While the game has been deemed one of the most difficult 2D platformers in recent times, it has deceptively simple controls, with only three main actions – jumping, dashing, and climbing. Despite the limited options, speedrunners have found crazy ways to blaze through the many platforming challenges in the game. However, there are certain categories and challenge runs that really push the game's platforming mechanics to its limits, and one of the most interesting ones is the 100% minimum grabs category. In this run, you have to 100% complete the game, which involves collecting all 176 of the collectible berries and finishing every single level the game has to offer, including the challenging B and C sides. But you have to do all of this while minimizing the total number of grabs used, providing a totally unique challenge. This is very similar to something like the Super Mario 64 A button challenge or a low percent speedrun, in that while this is a speedrun, Lowering the total grab count is more valuable than a lower final time, so slower strats are used if they can save a grab. For the sake of the challenge, a grab is defined not by pressing the grab button itself, but by how many times grabbing is actually used, as otherwise, you could just hold grab for most of the game. For example, climbing this wall and grabbing onto the next wall counts as two grabs, even though you press and hold the grab button for one input. Also, picking up objects, like Jellyfish and Crystallized Theo, does not count as a grab for the purposes of this challenge, even though they do use the grab button. This is mainly because optimizing these grab inputs is not very fun, but also, the game does instruct you to carry these objects, not grab them. So with all of this in mind, how can speedrunners forego one of the few controls in Celeste, yet still conquer all the game has to offer? There are many glitches and techniques that are utilized, but the most essential one is neutral jumps. The most intuitive use of grabbing is to climb walls, and neutral jumps let us climb walls without grabbing. With well-timed directional inputs, you can neutral jump off of a wall, which means jumping without holding any direction, and then immediately after, hold the direction towards the wall. This lets you get a significant amount of height, and by repeating this, you can scale any wall without grabbing. Neutral jumps are used basically everywhere in the run, as it eliminates many trivial uses of climbing. But obviously, there are many more obstacles than just verticality, so we're going to have to use some speed tech. We can use things like hyper and ultra dashes, which lets you gain speed by jumping off of the ground after dashing down diagonally, coyote frames, which lets you jump for a brief period after leaving the ground, and corner kicks, which lets you do a wall jump as you pass the corner of a wall. Combining all of these pieces of tech, we can defy death in a lot of places and save grabs. However, when it comes to pushing the game to its absolute limit, we need more than just precise platforming. We need to use some exploits, like the demo dash and the grabless platform activation. Normally, the player is crouched only while performing downwards dashes, but demo dashes allow the player to remain crouched while dashing in any direction. This becomes invaluable when confronted with spinners, aka circular spikes. Normally, Madeline's hurtbox is 9 pixels tall, but while crouched, her hurtbox shrinks to only 4 pixels tall. Coincidentally, most groups of spinners have 4 pixel tall vertical gaps between individual spinners, which means that with a pixel perfect demo dash, you can dash between spinners without dying. Demo dashes are extremely useful like in this room in the Celestial Resort. Normally, you'd have to grab these three wooden blocks to get them to fall and progress to the next room with the berry. However, with a demo dash, we can just dash through the dust bunnies at the bottom to complete the room with zero grabs. The other exploit, the grabless platform activation, does exactly what you think it would do, allow you to activate platforms without grabbing them. It's used exclusively when a block has spikes on the top, that would normally force us to grab onto the side to activate it. This trick is only possible because spikes don't kill you if you're moving in the same direction they are facing. Because of this, as long as you have upward speed, you can get one pixel above the block, which will activate it. The biggest problem now is moving away from the block before we fall into the spikes and die. There are a lot of sneaky ways to do this, and it greatly varies depending on the situation. For example, in this room in the Golden Ridge, since there is wind pushing us to the left, 
we can actually use it to push us onto the edge of the platform and then just hold right to get away from the spikes. Another way to do this is by using a corner glide, which is just a well-placed up diagonal dash into a corner that preserves dash speed. This makes a ton of rooms possible grabless that normally aren't, as many rooms in the game are basically impossible to complete without activating these platforms. Now with all of these tricks and glitches under our belt, runners were prepared to tackle the tremendous challenge that is 100% minimum grabs. A runner named Universe Cat, or just Uni for short, had been labbing out a lot of the grabless strats as early as 2018, but she would spend most of her time tasking the normal speedrun categories. It wasn't until 2021 that Uni would attempt a full run, completing all the game has to offer with only 29 grabs. The six hour run features a ton of task level precise platforming that's only made possible with pause buffering and over two hours of mistakes. It cannot be understated just how hard some of these grabless strats are. In some rooms, there's literally zero margin for error. Because of this massive level of difficulty, Uni was the only runner brave enough to attempt full 100% minimum grab runs. And after this 29 grab run, Uni proclaimed that she would not be doing this again. However, that would change on Christmas Day of 2022, when Celeste's most game-breaking discovery was found. Spinner Stunning is a super unique exploit, where by pausing every two frames, you can essentially move through spinners without dying. This works because the game attempts to load the collision for these spinners every three frames, and by pausing on the frame where spinner loading occurs, you can skip that loading frame. By repeating this, you essentially unload the object, allowing for the player to pass through it with ease. It's worth noting that due to collision optimization, spinners are divided into three different groups. Not all groups can be unloaded at the same time, so there is still some routing around what spinners you can stand in and which ones still kill you. But also, and more importantly, you have to pause on every other frame while performing this trick. And that is way beyond human precision, which makes spinner stunning a TAS-only glitch. Regardless, the day after the discovery, Uni would scout out new grab saves with the spinner stun, and cut out 8 grabs from the speedrun. But it wouldn't take long for a human viable method of the glitch to be found. While the task has to weave in consecutive frame-perfect pauses while doing precise movement, the human solution is... just to do nothing. You see, there's a floating point variable in the game called time active. And this variable is normally incremented every frame, and certain game mechanics, like loading in spinner collision, are dependent on time active incrementing. However, because of the way floating point numbers work, there will come a point where you lose precision with an incredibly large number due to rounding. This is because there is limited space to store the floating point number, so when trying to express a very large number, the ending digits cannot be stored. When the number is large enough, these missing digits will make it so that adding a small number no longer increases the large number. In the case of time active, that loss of precision comes after it reaches a value of around 2 to the 19th, or when the game is open for around 118 hours. Once you reach that point, the normal increments do not actually change the time active value since it is so large, and since the value isn't changing, spinner collision will no longer load leaving two-thirds of the spinners permanently unloaded. So basically, doing nothing for 118 hours makes you invincible to these spinners. It's not the most pleasant solution, but it allows for a human to reliably perform all the grab saves that are possible with spinner stunning. So this would theoretically save eight grabs in the run at the cost of an ungodly amount of waiting. As a fun fact, many particle effects have similar floating point glitches. So after waiting this long, particles and wind are visually completely broken. In addition to this massive glitch, another huge discovery was found called the dash trigger skip. This exploit allowed you to keep two dashes for the first half of the farewell chapter, as opposed to just one, and it let you save two grabs throughout the chapter. Fun fact here, this skip is rarely referred to as subscribe to msushi skip, 
which 90% of my viewers are already performing anyways. With these two discoveries, and some other miscellaneous finds, Uni set out to once again complete a 100% minimum grabs run, but this time, only using 17 grabs. However, this run would be much longer than the previous attempt, as there are four levels that require the spinner unloading glitch. Chapter 4 B-side, Chapter 7 B-side, Chapter 8 B-side, and Chapter 8 C-side. This means that there are 472 hours of nothing in the speedrun, as the player has to wait in order to activate the glitch. Because this run is nearly 3 weeks long, a grab save was actually found in Chapter 2 Seaside in the middle of the attempt, ultimately ending in a 16 grab run. Despite the run's absurd length, there's only about 4 hours of gameplay, but during that time, there's still a lot of flashy platforming tricks that are barely possible. Just to give some examples, there are a ton of tight jumps in Forsaken City B-side to avoid grabbing onto traffic blocks. There's this jump in the old site B-side that is only possible by one-fifth of a pixel. Skipping the platform block in this room of the Golden Ridge A-side involves an absurd amount of coyote frames and a tight corner jump. And this one berry at the end of the chapter involves a total of three grabless platform activations and cleverly jumping onto respawning platforms. The core B-side does some very casual pixel-perfect jumps off of lava, because why not? And also does some clever fire and ice switch routing to make some rooms look silly. And in the Forsaken City Seaside, after several tough tricks to reach the end, you can skip grabbing a traffic block by grabbing the heart from the right side with a demo dash wall bounce and a tough dash to grab the heart while avoiding the spikes. The 16 grabs in the run are mostly used to move things that block us, and the breakdown goes as follows. There are three grabs in Chapter 1 A-side to grab traffic blocks or just normal blocks that block our path to collectibles. There are a whopping six grabs in Chapter 1 B-side because so many rooms require us to grab traffic blocks. There is one grab in Chapter 7 A-side to move a traffic block that blocks your path, and two more in Chapter 7 B-side, both on traffic blocks as well. There's two grabs in Chapter 1 C-side, surprisingly both on traffic blocks, and one in Chapter 2 C-side, where you have to grab a dream block to avoid dying to spikes. And last but not least, there's only one grab in Chapter 9, in order to move a block that blocks your path. Since Uni's 16 grab run, a lot more attention has been drawn to the category, and as a result, two grab saves have been found, one in Chapter 1 Seaside, and the other in Chapter 2 Seaside. For the remaining grabs, all of them are unfortunately used on movable objects that we either have to use, or just straight up block our path. So unless we find another game-breaking glitch, it is very unlikely that we'll see some of these grabs saved. The most likely candidates to be saved are in Chapter 1 B-side on traffic blocks, but only time can tell if they can actually be skipped. Uni is still the only runner to have tackled this outrageous speedrun, and despite a 14 grab run being possible, she claims that she probably won't attempt it again unless another big discovery is found. I would recommend checking out Uni's highlights of the 16 grab run linked in the description below, and also check out her channel, because if progress is made on the 100% minimum grabs run, that will be the best place to find out about it. While Celeste's 100% minimum grabs look solved for now, I wouldn't be surprised if even more developments are made in the future. Because if you can break the game just by standing still for 118 hours, who knows what else is possible. Thanks for watching.